In the last few videos we've been looking at the sine rule and the cosine rule. In this video we're just going to work through a couple of questions that involve either the sine rule or the cosine rule. This is question number four. We're asked to find the value of x and y in the triangle below giving each answer to three significant figures. So you've got x just here which is an angle and y which is a length. We're given 6.3 centimetres, 3.4 centimetres and an angle of 52 degrees. Let's go ahead now and start by finding angle x. I can't use the sine rule to directly find angle x as I would need the opposite side. Clearly we're not going to use the cosine rule for a missing angle as we only have two sides. As a result I'm going to call this angle just here angle z. So using the sine rule to find angle z I can write sine z over the 3.4 will be equal to the sine of 52 degrees, so sine of 52 degrees over 6.3. Once I've solved for z, I simply subtract z and 52 from 180, which will then give me x. So we can write now that sine z, multiplying both sides by the 3.4, 3.4 sine 52 over 6.3. We've seen this now in a previous video and at this stage I'm simply going to take the inverse sign now of both sides of this equation making sure that I'm in degrees shift sign so it's the inverse sign 3.4 sine of 52 over the 6.3 so 6.3 goes in there and this will give us the size of z. So z is 25.168. So z is equal to 25.168 dot 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 and so on and so forth. Okay, at this stage I can say therefore we've got now x will be equal to 180 minus the 52 that we've got minus the 25.168 six eight and so on and so forth that we have in the calculator so if i do 180 minus the 52 minus now the answer we've just found that gives me 102.831 so that's 102.831 dot 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 so we can say now that that's going to be 103 degrees and that is given to three significant figures so that now gives us x. At this stage, I'm going to store this in the calculator. Shift, store, A. So, writing this on, let's go ahead and write this on. This angle just here is going to be 102.8, which we've got stored in the calculator. I now need to find the length y. At this stage, I could use the cosine rule. So if I look here, I've got an enclosed angle that I've just found. Alternatively, I could go ahead and use the sine rule by saying now that y over the sine of 102.8 will be equal to 6.3 over the sine of 52. It really doesn't matter. In fact, I will show it both way rounds. So what we'll say then is y over the sine of the answer that we've just found, which is stored in my calculator for 102, uh, 102.8 will be equal to, and I've put brackets here, don't need brackets, can have them on if we want, and we can say that's going to be equal to 6.3 over the sine now of 52 degrees. So all I'm going to do here is simply now write an, in the calculator 6.3 sine of the value that I've stored in the calculator, which is for 102.8, and we're going to divide this now by the sine of 52 degrees. That's going to give me now 7.795, so y is equal to 7.795 dot 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 dot. We need to give this answer now to three significant figures. So to three significant figures, that's going to be 7.80. So let's just write this on. So that will be equal now to 7. Point, and then we're going to have 80. 
and that will be centimeters and that's correct now to three significant figures. What I could have done here is use the cosine rule. So if I use the cosine rule, which we've seen before, the cosine rule is given as a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. I could say now that y is going to be equal to the square root of b squared, which is going to be 6.3 squared plus c squared. It doesn't matter which one I call b and c as we've seen before, 3.4 squared minus 2 times by b, which is 6.3, times by c, which is 3.4, times by the cosine of the angle, which we've got in the calculator, and that's going to be cos now, and in brackets, I'm going to have the 102.8. So if we do that, let's go ahead and do that. Remember, this value of 102.8 is already stored in there. So we can say it's the square root of 6.3 squared, plus now the 3.4 squared, minus now the two lots, so 2 times by the 6.3 times by the 3.4 times by now the cosine, so let's put this in, cosine of the value that I've stored in the calculator, and that's going to give us exactly the same as expected, 7.795 and so on and so forth. So we can either use the sine or the cosine on the second part. We've got two unknowns, therefore we're going to need two equations in that particular scenario. Okay, let's look at the next question. This is question five. It says in the diagram below, BCD is a straight line. So BCD is a straight line. In part A, we need to find the size of the obtuse angle X. So that one is just here. So let's look at the information we've got. We've got AB is 4 millimetres, we've got BC is 6.5 millimetres, and we've got the angle ABC at 105 degrees. If I can find this angle just here, again, angles on a straight line sum to 180, so I can subtract that. Just looking ahead, I'm going to have to use at least two applications. That might be cosine followed by sine, or cosine followed by cosine. Um, just thinking ahead. So what I'm going to do at this stage is the following. I'm going to say now that this length right here, and I'm going to call this length, and we'll call this one, let's go, and uh, let's call this length right here y. At this stage, I'm going to use the cosine rule to find y, as I've got an enclosed angle. So using the cosine rule, which we've just seen, we can see that y is going to be equal to the square root of 4 squared plus 6.5 squared minus 2 lots of 4 multiplied by 6.5 multiplied by the cosine of 105 degrees. So let's now get this length right here. So calculator, we want now the square root of 4 squared plus the 6.5 squared minus now 2 lots of the 4 times by the 6.5 times by the cosine now of 105 degrees. So that gives me 8.46. So y is equal to 8.46 dot 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 dot. I will store this in now as A, shift store A, and if you want to write just here, that that's A, that might help you. So let's go ahead and write that on. So Y is going to be equal to 8.46 dot 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 dot, and remember, we store that in as A. At this stage, we can now use the sine rule. So if I look here, I'm going to call this angle just here Z. We know that z plus x is going to be equal to 180, or if you like, uh, 180 minus z will be x. So I'm going to set up now the sine rule to find this angle right here. So I'm going to say that the sine of z over the opposite, which is going to be 4, will be equal to the sine of 105, so the sine of 105, over the value that we've just found of 8.46 dot 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 and so on and so forth. 
So sine of z will be now four lots of a sine of 105 divided by now the 8.46, which is in the calculator, and we can find that. So let's go ahead and do that. We will take the inverse sine, shift sine. Then we will have now four lots of a sine of 105, and we're going to divide that now by the value that's stored in the calculator, which is A. That is going to give me on there 27.146. So 27.146 dot, 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 dot. We can say that x is equal to 180 minus z. Therefore, we're going to get x will be equal to, and we're giving this now to, uh, we'll give this to three significant figures. Let's go ahead and do that. So we will do now 180 minus that answer. So that's 152.85. So 152.85 dot, 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 dot. And I'll say now that x is going to be equal to 153 degrees. And that's given to three significant figures. So that part is now done. I'll just store this in the calculator. Shift store B. Just in case I use this now in the future. So this is going to be now x is for 152.85 dot, 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 dot. And that there is going to be B. In part B, we need to find the length AD, giving our answer to three significant figures. So A is here and D is here. Well, let's go ahead and just draw the information that we've got and we can form a triangle. Let's see what this looks like. And again, this doesn't have to be massively accurate, but it will give us some idea now of what's going on. So let's just make that slightly shorter. And that is going to be now A to D. So if I put this on, let's write this on here. We'll have now, uh, we'll have A just here. So this is going to be A, this is going to be C, and this is going to be D. We've got 3.5 here. We've found now A to C is going to be the 8.46, which is still in my calculator. And we've got this angle just here, which is going to be 152.85 and so on and so forth, which again is stored in the calculator. So we can find A to D using the cosine rule. So if I just go ahead and call this one now, I'll just call it A. We can say that A is going to be the square root of the 8.46 dot, 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 dot squared plus 3.5 squared minus two lots of the 8.46 multiplied now by the 3.5 multiplied by the cosine of the 152.85 and so on and so forth that's in the calculator. So with the calculator now, what we need is the square root. Remember, we've got this in. This is A squared. That's the 8.46, so I'm just plugging this in, plus the 3.5 squared, minus now 2 lots of A, times by the B, which is a 3.5, times by now the cosine of the answer that's stored in the calculator, which we know is B. So let's go ahead and work that out. That's 11.69 and so on and so forth. Let's write this in. So A is equal to 11.69 dot, 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 dot. Therefore, this is going to be 11.7 and that will be millimetres. And that is given now to three significant figures. So that is just this length right here, which we found. In part C, we're told a line from point A is drawn such that it's perpendicular to the line BCD. Find the shortest distance from the point B to the line. Right, let's go ahead and just draw this on what we've got here. So what I'm going to do, let's just put, uh, we'll put this, we'll drop this line down. This is going to be now coming down here, like so, and it's perpendicular to this line right here. 
So let's read that. A line from point A is drawn such that it's perpendicular to the line B, C, D. So find the shortest distance from the point B to the line. So what we want is this right here. So I'm going to draw this below. Let's go ahead and just draw this. What we've got is a right angle triangle. Perpendicular means it'll be a 90 degree right angle. And we will look at the, uh, the configuration of this triangle now. If we look at the angle we have now, this angle is 105. Angles on a straight line sum to 180, so this is 75. So this is 75 degrees. Here is my right angle. And we know that the hypotenuse is going to be 4 millimetres. So what we want is this side just here. This is going to be the adjacent. And I'll just call this length now B. So what we can say then, if we consider that this is the hypotenuse, this is the adjacent. Going back to trig ratios, if you want to use this particular format, remember our triangles from a long time back. If we want the adjacent, it's the cosine of the angle times by the hypotenuse. Therefore, what we can say is that B will be equal now to the hypotenuse, which is 4, multiplied by the cosine of the angle. The cosine of 75 degrees will be plugged in the calculator. So 4 cos of 75, and that's going to give us now uh, root 6 minus root 2, which is going to be now 1.035. So 1.035 dot, 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 and so on and so forth. I will now give this to three significant figures, so we can say it will be 1.04, and we're working in millimetres, and that will give us our answer. So let's just put this on, 1.04 millimetres, and that now is complete. So all I've done is simply now drawn a line that's perpendicular here, and then set up a small right angle triangle, and we've gone ahead and found that value. So lots of different questions, and as you can see, we either use a sine rule or the cosine rule, or a combination of the two. We use basic angle facts, and we also sometimes have to go back to our trig ratios, or so cartoa, to answer examples where we have now right angle triangles.